How to become a famous guitarist on YouTube from your bedroom. YouTube is offered a, a huge platform for uh, both guitarists, guitar teachers to be able to showcase their particular skills to a worldwide audience. And when we're talking about becoming famous, we're really talking about having a YouTube channel that continues to build and grow by gaining more views, more subscribers, um, that will be able to open up doors and opportunities that otherwise wouldn't be available to somebody working from either their spare room or from their bedroom. And that's really what we're looking at. Being able on a local level, say if you're a guitar teacher, you want something that can showcase what it is, the field that you work in, or if you're a guitarist, can open up the opportunities to maybe be in a band. Uh, there's lots of different avenues where a YouTube channel can help you achieve this. Fortunately, there's some people, some guitarists who are more popular than others. Some people hit a brick wall where they don't know where they're, go they're going. I've wrote a short, concise ebook that can probably go a little bit more in depth than this video can, of highlighting the different points that you would need to do to be able to uh, have a YouTube channel that will build and grow. Uh, the link is in the description of this video where that uh, ebook is available. But really, in this video, we're highlighting 10 main points that will help you achieve a YouTube channel that will build and grow. Our first step one, choose your YouTube channel name. I think most YouTubers wish that they could go back and change their channel name. Many people have chosen their own name as the channel name, but we need to have a YouTube channel name that describes what it is that you particularly do. So some people have chosen names like, I don't know, like Jedi One, but does that really describe what it is? Or it could even be misleading because it's more likely to, somebody's more likely to think that's about Star Wars than it is about guitar. You could choose your own name. Say if I chose my name, James Rundle, that isn't really going to say anything to anybody about what the YouTube channel is actually about. So if we're thinking that it's got to describe, so if you were doing Led Zeppelin covers, if you call your YouTube channel Led Zeppelin Covers, immediately that's going to describe what it is that you particularly do. We'll also think of our um, profile picture and also our banner. Um, does that uh, visually show what it is that you particularly do? I have an example of my own uh, profile picture and banner uh, on the screen now. And that really should visually tell you what my channel is about without me actually having to describe it. So that's something really to think about. Step two, which I suppose goes hand in glove with your channel name, is choose your channel's direction or have you found your particular niche. So really, uh, a YouTube sh channel should have a definite theme so that people know exactly what to expect from your channel. There's nothing worse than finding a particular video that you may like. You go to the person's channel to see whether you can find more of the same and you find um, there's no real structure to the channel. It might even have a video of, um, you know, video holiday videos or videos of the, the children playing in the garden and you just immediately turn off because obviously that, that's not what it is you're looking for. Really, so the best advice that I ever got was choose your field, narrow, the, narrow it down, and then narrow it down again. And we can do this in a number of ways. For example, your subject matter would be guitar. We could narrow that down to electric guitar. We could narrow it down to guitar tutorials. Narrow it down to, say, for example, ACDC. So, and then even then you could narrow it down again to be either aimed at beginners intermediate or to be aimed at advanced. So your channel would then become very specific in what it was, what its aim was. And then people would come to know you for that particular thing. So anybody who wanted ACDC guitar tutorials would know that you deal specifically in that and that would help you. But when you're trying to cover a wide range of everything, you have no somebody could choose your channel because you might have done 
I don't know, an ACDC um, guitar tutorial and think, oh, I like that. But then they look at others and there's no real um, clarity about what it is you do. It's a bit like um, there's, there's nothing definite there. And that's what really we're looking for. We could also do that in, in a number of different ways. Uh, your subject could be guitar. You could narrow that down to acoustic guitar. Then it could be instrumental covers. So you've narrowed it down to that. You're, you're dealing in a specific subject matter. And really... Um, it's going to help you gain subscribers because your subscribers are going to know exactly what they're going to get from looking at your channel. Step three, which I've highlighted in the book, is don't expect overnight success. We've all seen videos on YouTube that have gone viral, but these are very few and far between. Um, unless you've got a, an eight-year-old son who can play like Jimi Hendrix, or you can play Eddie Van Halen's Eruption with your feet, the chances are that that kind of video is not going to go viral. So we're not really looking at trying to produce a viral video, because a viral video is a little bit like a one-hit wonder. We're looking at building a channel that um, will build and grow. And that isn't necessarily going to happen overnight. Some people think they can do two or three videos and they're going to be a, a hit success. So what we really need to do is we need it's going to involve work. And the best, again, the best advice that I got was to do at least one video a week, which is uploaded on the same day each week. So there's regularity. So subscribers will be coming to know that. And for example, on a Tuesday at a certain time, you are going to upload your particular video. This can be um, difficult at times because maybe you would like to spend more. If, for example, I'm doing guitar tutorials, Queen guitar tutorials. Sometimes I feel like I would like to spend more time with that particular song uh, to get it really, really perfect. Uh, but when we're on a time constraint of trying to do it every week, sometimes we can feel that we're sacrificing a little bit of quality so you've got to kind of make a decision on how you want to do that um but really we need to be regular sometimes you can um when i first started out i was doing far too many videos far too quickly i wasn't putting the quality in that i should have been and i was too excited by the aspect i've got to get lots of videos out so the, the um, quality suffered and I was like kind of saturated, so anybody who subscribed was getting, you know, five and six uh, notifications of um, videos, and that would that's like a kind of a turn off if you somebody doesn't want to be inundated with your videos, but say one or even two a week, like a nice steady, um, sustainable uh, aim to go for. But like I say, don't expect overnight success. Success is going to come from building a YouTube channel and from hard work and effort it isn't going to be i'm going to do one video and i'm going to become famous so step four communicate with your audience now there's a number of ways that we can communicate with our audience now we've all seen guitar tutorials where all you can see say the guitar the hand on the guitar neck now these do have their place in learning to play the guitar but however when we're talking about becoming popular on youtube the audience isn't necessarily getting any kind of direct communication or knowing exactly who you are so they don't actually build up a relationship with you because all they're saying is your hand they want there's nothing better than looking straight into the camera lens and talking to your subscribers so and they'll build up and they'll feel like they know who you are so they're building up a real you you are building up a relationship with them even though that you cannot see them but they can see you so we really need a look, look at being able to do that although like i say the hand on the guitar is uh, an important part of um being able to teach guitar but how I've tried to get around that, I do a guitar tutorial where I look into the camera and talk to it. And I'll do a performance video of the track where they can see me hand 
and what it is I'm doing and I have the guitar tab on the screen. Also communication with uh, our subscribers is if they are going to comment on our videos we have to have the good courtesy to comment back. Um, a lot of people complain that uh, they don't get any replies when they've commented on videos uh, of the particular person who's making the video they don't bother replying back so there's no communication there's no relationship there the person becomes well what's the point of uh, watching this video and commenting on it because i'm not going to get anything back out of it also communication involves um listening to what your subscribers want a lot of subscribers will ask can you do a video like this can you do a video like that and if you're listening to that you can build up what it is people are asking for and what seems to be what people want and that's if you deliver what people want then people are going to come back they're going to subscribe and then they're going to view your video and then it's in turn going to become more popular what a lot of people have said is that the fact they're going to find it difficult, especially if they're doing guitar tutorials, is actually speaking into the cam into the microphone, looking into the camera lens. And one of the things that can put people off that is we've all seen these very popular uh, American guitar tutorials, where um, they're very um, demonstrative, you know, bags of personality. We might feel that we haven't kind of got that kind of personality. But if you're just yourself, there's there's room for the big personality. And myself, I'm not particularly exuberant, um, quite quietly spoken. But I've had a lot of comments where people say that's actually a refreshing change to see somebody. I've had somebody say it's nice to hear a quiet Englishman doing a guitar lesson where they don't feel like they're being shouted at. Um, so some people actually like that so don't feel that you've got to be overly exuberant or put on a false personality just be yourself because people if especially if you're doing guitar tutorials are just wanting the information to be able to learn step five which is very important what are you offering your subscribers being an ama being an amazing and talented doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's going to love you nobody likes a show off you've got you know if i could play bohemian rhapsody just as well as brian may and note perfect is anybody really interested if they want to watch bohemian rhapsody being played they'll watch green play it and they'll watch brian may play the guitar solo they don't need me for that so what is it that i'm offering if i'm offering a, an explanation of how to play that then people are going to watch that um We've seen that, if we look at the, the example of um, Sung Ga Jung, that amazing Chinese guitarist, he started out as a, a small child uh, playing some amazing like, acoustic uh, instrumentals. But he didn't just stand, It wasn't his YouTube channel isn't just built on the fact that he's a, a, an amazing child prodigy, uh, which people would want to watch. Because obviously he was going to get older, he wasn't always going to be a child playing the guitar. So his uh, actual um, channel links to a website where you can get all the guitar tablature for them particular songs. So in that way, he's communicating with his audience and he's offering them something. He's not just sitting there and showing off on I Clever. He's also offering. So people are going to watch his videos. They're then going to get the the guitar tap to try to work out what it is he's playing and then they're probably going to go keep going back to his channel or watch his performance because they are trying to work out what it is he's playing so we've really got to ask ourselves would you actually watch your video if it wasn't you is it offering you something because people want to be either entertained or they're going to look on youtube uh, for information uh, to, so that they can learn something uh, it's very rarely that somebody just wants to watch you because you're so amazing. Um, it isn't really going to happen. I wrote down here in my book, only when awesomeness helps and inspires others can it be considered truly awesome. So it's really got to be either very entertaining or enlightening to those watching. Step six, choosing your equipment. Unfortunately, if you're working from your bedroom, or like I am, um, in my spare room, we can't all afford uh, a camera crew, a makeup team, lighting. Um, personally, I'm using my iPhone 
a, an iRig microphone plugged into that. I've got my tripod, my microphone stand. Also used um, some security lights. I took the glass out so it wouldn't heat up. And I used them for lighting. Uh, I painted the back wall white. There's an example here on the screen now of what my original uh, first YouTube videos look like and what they look like now. So I'm using the same room, I'm using the same gear, but um, altering things gives it a, hopefully a little bit more of a professional look, uh, but in an inexpensive way. And if you check out on YouTube, there's a lot of YouTube videos uh, highlighting uh, cheap ways of being able to light a room to give it a bit more of a professional look. I mean the beauty of YouTube is that um, it gives the person who's in the spare room or the bedroom an opportunity to, to uh, showcase what they do with it wouldn't have otherwise been able to do that. We can look at um, video editing software as well which enables you to put the guitar tablature on the screen in an inexpensive way and it gives it um, a bit of a professional look in the fact that you are taking what it is you're doing particularly seriously. Step seven, how to get views. So you've produced your amazing video. You're now going to sit back and just wait for everybody to view it and love it and like it. And you're going to become famous. Well, unfortunately, that isn't kind of how it works. Um, we've got to be kind of proactive in getting videos uh, viewed. We can do this with social media. I think a social is the operative word here. It's not anti-social media, it is social media. We have Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest, blogs, Google+. I think for Facebook, for example, has a specialist um, like forums uh, where we can post our videos. So if you were doing uh, how to play Coldplay songs, for example, there will be, you know, Coldplay fan forums on Facebook where you could post them videos. Same goes for with Twitter, where you can tweet. Um, personally, I've went on Twitter, which I, I was kind of backward and coming forward with Twitter, but I ended up where um, I had BrianMay.com tweeting my Queen videos. I've had the Queen fan club tweeting. Um, my videos as well. We think of like the Queen Fan Club. Um, I think on Facebook it has like something like twenty five thousand followers. So when you're posting your videos in there, that's the potential of putting your video in front of twenty five thousand people, who are potentially going to want to be able to view that. When you've got say something like BrianMade.com on Twitter, which I think has thirty thousand fans. Again, that's another thirty thousand people. If you're a Brian May fan, the chances are that you're gonna be you're gonna like guitars. So therefore I'm putting my videos in front of people, the very people who are gonna to wanna to watch them. So it's really targeting an audience and that is gonna bring in people watching. You're being active in the way of getting them watching, you're not just sitting back and waiting for it to happen. And a top tip is posting your videos on Google Plus with a full description of contents is going to help your videos get noticed on Google as well. People put Google um, posts as well. Also, have things like Instagram, which is quite helpful because it has like 15 seconds of video you can upload, and that can kind of advertise what your latest video, and that gets a lot of views. And I think uh, Twitter has, I think it has like 20 seconds of video you can actually upload to that now. So it kind of gives a uh, a preview of what your video is about. Step eight, dealing with haters, which is kind of, I don't want to dwell on it too much, but it is kind of a serious problem. Personally, I know a lot of people who are put off by going on YouTube because they really feel that they kind of deal with, um, with hate or people criticizing them. You know, everyone has an opinion uh, which they're entitled to, but unfortunately in this online age we'll have a lot of, um, as I call them, keyboard warriors. Uh, people who wouldn't normally um, express their opinion to, you, to your face, but they will do it behind, you know, uh, in the safety of their own home, on a keyboard, um, giving out criticism, clicking dislike. Um, 
and it can put a lot of people off when you first start out on YouTube when you first start get you will get uh, people either hate or leave a negative comments and it can be a bit of a sting and blow but eventually you do get used to it and to a large degree you have got a man up and take it on the chin and not be necessarily so sensitive and it's always remember that not every critical comment is necessarily really hate um, personally if somebody's been what I deem as being hateful or overly critical I um, block them delete the comment and really leave it at that don't engage these people in any kind of conversation because you're not going to get anywhere with them um, if you are receiving any like, comments because sometimes hateful comments are unkind but sometimes they can have an element of truth in them so just use and draw from them negative comments to give you insight into what you are going to have to do to make your videos better and that's really the, the best ad, the, the best advice but always remember that hate or you know being overly critical really only comes from the unsuccessful all when when I get hate or overly critical comments it's gen it's always going to be coming from somebody who's dissatisfied with their own life they uh, maybe can't handle the fact that um, your channel has become more popular uh, than they think you deserve or they they haven't become popular so they're therefore disgruntled successful people don't leave overly critical comments or hate on other people's video you cannot imagine somebody like you know um jimmy page or led zeppelin doesn't get on youtube and start commenting on uh, other people you know other people who've like you say done cover versions of his songs and tell them that they're terrible he doesn't feel the need does he because he's jimmy page he's a multi-millionaire he's highly famous and respected he doesn't feel the need to do that successful people do not criticize and leave hate on other people's um, channels so really the the benefits of YouTube and the things that you gain from having a successful YouTube channel totally outweigh uh, any negative comments that you'll receive when they like personally when you've had uh, say the Queen fan club ask you to be able to record music for their particular video because they want to collaborate or you've had um, brianmade.com use one of your videos on on the website or I think that was the other week brianmade.com YouTube channel subscribe to my channel that's a huge buzz or uh, one particular case I had a, a 12 year old girl who had learned a particular a uh, mother's favorite Queen song on acoustic guitar and she played it at her mother's funeral um, that kind of, that's very touching and it, it makes you feel like glad that you've actually put um, that video out there for somebody to be able to do that and were, so if anybody has anything bad to say you know the thing the things that have happened have far outweighed anything negative anybody can say step nine effective thumbnails and channel layout um, I have an example here on the screen of the the, the generate the YouTube generated thumbnail, the picture there. If me looking uh, like I've had far too much to drink, with a gormless look on, uh, expression on my face. Now we're going to look at a YouTube thumbnail, which really should describe everything that's in the video. We've got the the title, the album cover, the picture of myself. There's a little bit of a uh, snippet of guitar tab. So visually, it's telling everybody what's in the video without them really having to read uh, what's, go what's going on. They're not going to know exactly. Because when people are, are searching through YouTube, they make split-second decisions of what, on what they're going to click on. So if your video uh, descri uh, thumbnail describes exactly without having to read too much, then they're going to click on it. We also have your channel layout as well. Uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, you go on the YouTube channel and you might know you can't find anything. It's just a list of like every video that they've ever done. If you put your YouTube videos into playlists and arrange them playlists, like we're looking on the screen now, 
personally I've like with all the different songs I've put them all into which particular albums that they're on so if you're looking for a particular song and you know what album it's off you'll click on for example the sheer heart attack album if you click on that you'll find all the songs that I've done from that album or you can have select particular ones like they say Queen's Greatest Hits so I've selected the ones that are from the greatest hits so you can view through that so you find making it easy for people to navigate because it's an amazing amount of people who who say want they'll know that you've done a video on something but they can't actually find it so you make it easier step 10 which is very important writing effective titles descriptions and tags so really you've got to ask yourself when you're writing the um, the title is the title describing exactly what uh, the video is about we want to avoid misleading titles if you've done a guitar performance and you accidentally call it a guitar lesson um, that's going to frustrate people because they're going to click on your video thinking it's a lesson and it's not it's a guitar cover which is sometimes easier to do when we're writing the description out we need um, to put everything we can possibly think of to describe what's in the video this helps YouTube pick up on the content of what's in the video and it helps so in search results also the tags we need to um, when writing the tags in this also helps YouTube to know what's in the video and um, YouTube generally has um, the generated tags with what it's guessing is in the video which it's getting from what your title and description is and if we use them that's going to uh, help uh, you your videos come up in searches and one top tip is to write your YouTube channel name into um, the tags uh, what this does it when somebody's watching one of your videos and all the suggested videos that are in the side column will be your videos because they've all got your um, channel name in so I hope these top uh, 10 tips of uh, being able to help you decide how to go about um, building a YouTube channel. Um, like I say, there's an ebook available in the description. Um, and that really goes into a lot more depth of how to go about having a successful YouTube channel that will build. That will open up doors uh, to enable you to be a successful musician. So as always, thank you for watching.